So the, the devices have a couple of preset settings or they, they can be moved, but let's, let's talk about mine. Yeah. Um, mine is set to pace me if I go below 40, which it, I never have, so it doesn't pace me. And it has a higher pacing rate. It'll pace up to a certain point. And quite honestly, I don't even know what that is. Uh, I should look that up. That's my device. I should know that. <laughs> but it also has, uh, for shocking, it has a couple of different settings. The first one yeah. is uh, the setting where it will start to record. It'll start to look a little closer. Mine is set to 166. So when my heart rate gets up to 166, my device takes more notice. And it mm. will start recording that, wow. what's going on. And so my doctor can look and say, oh, you went above 166, and here's mm -hmm. what your heart rate was doing at the time. <laughs> um, and then it has a limit of when is it going to shock you? Mm -hmm. And mine is set for 196. Uh, that can be, I mean, it can be anywhere from, it could be anywhere from 160 to, I mean, I'm sure it can go lower, but it can go all the way up to, I think, 240 or 280 or something like that. Your doctor can set it for whatever uh, the, the, the rate they want to see. Um, mine looked at that loop recorder recording and said, you know, well, you were at about 240 here and you were almost, you were about to pass out. So we know 240 is where you're, you're going to pass out somewhere around there. And so we bumped it down. Uh, it was at 188, but I exercise a lot and I really push my heart rate a lot. And my doctor doesn't like that, but he's <laughs> supportive. He says, I'm, you know, I'm not telling you to stop. I just wish you wouldn't. Uh, you know, you can work at lower heart rates and, and for longer times, but you know, you do you, I like to ride the Peloton and I like to compete against the other people who are, are on the Peloton. I want to beat them. And so that means you got to push really hard. So my yeah, heart yeah. rate was hitting 170, 175, 178. Yeah. And that's on my, you know, my wearable, my watch, my, my mm. Apple watch that's on my chest strap that connects to the Peloton. I'm watching these different things as I ride. And I'm seeing, you know, 180 and I, I can't sustain that very long, but I back off. The problem is, is 188 is my shock zone. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that if I hit 188, 188 I'm going to get shocked. The device has other things that it looks at. It's got algorithms, discriminators. It's got templates it looks at. It looks at the heart rate and it says, yeah, even though you're over 188, is this a normal heart rate where the top chambers beat and then the bottom chambers beat? Is that normal? And so it will look at these things and decide, this is okay, you can keep going. But if you get too high, or if it starts to see things that are a little weird, like if, you're, if you've got your smartphone in your pocket and it's, and it's interfering a little bit with your device and it's making it look like there are extra heartbeats that aren't there, if the device gets confused at that point, it'll do the safest thing possible, which is to shock you. So I could be at, 190 beats a minute and be totally fine. But if the device gets confused or sees something concerning, it'll be play it safe and it'll, it'll pop me. And so when I'm looking at my wearable heart rate monitors, those are not terribly accurate. And my doctor is saying, yeah, you're, it shows 180 or really 170. I can't really get that high. He says it shows 170, but if that's 10% off, you're right at your limit. Like you're, you're right there. You, you could get popped. So be careful. And so when I hit 170 now, I, I back off. I try to keep it in like the 165 range. Um, I, I joke that with my doctor that I try to sustain right around 166 so that he sees I'm exercising that hard and uh, <laughs> can scold me. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not just a number. It's not just a heart rate. There's a whole bunch of other yeah. factors that go behind it before the device will shock. Wow. Actually, hearing this makes me appreciate my ICD even more. You know, <laughs> just, just to hear the complexity of that small device and yeah. the engineering behind it. Um, yeah, because yeah, it's quite smart in many ways. And they're, um, they're pretty smart. You said with your phone, would it, would something like that interfere with the ICD? In theory, um, you know, so anything okay. that, uh, anything that has electricity flowing through it, any mm. kind of motor or engine generates a small electromagnetic field. And and it's, it's an electrical field. It looks like electricity to anything that's measuring electricity. And that's what your, your device is doing. Your device isn't looking for the physical contraction of your heart. It's not looking for that muscle to contract. It's looking for the electrical signal that travels through your heart that causes it to beat. Mm. And when it sees other electrical signals, it can get confused. So if you're using a power tool, let's say you're using a power drill and you're right up against your chest because maybe it's a small area, and you're running it for a long time, that will might that might 
be picked up by the device. Now, there are, what I said, discriminators and templates built into the device. So they build in, they tell the device, what does EMI look like? What do different EMI fields look like? And the device can say, oh, I've seen that one before. That's probably EMI. And within that, I can still see the heartbeat. So I'm going to focus on the heartbeat and, and ignore the EMI. Uh, but sometimes it gets too confused. Like if you're welding and you're not taking the right precautions, the EKG strip that you see will just be black lines and you can't see an underlying rhythm underneath it. You can't see that natural heart rate. And so the device would get confused by that and say, I don't know what's going on. This looks horrible. I'm going to, I'm going to shock. So, but there are precautions you can take. Like with a smartphone, it does emit some EMI. It's a really low level. It's probably not harmful. But to be safe, the medical device companies say, keep it six inches away from your device. So don't put it in a breast pocket right by your device. Okay. But as you see, I'm putting it by my device. Why am I doing that? Yeah. Well, it's going to take time. If it's going to interfere with your device, it's not going to it's not going to shock you right away if it gets confused. Because again, we talked about that charge time. Like yes. At a minimum, you need to give it uh, you know, two seconds to identify a problem, six seconds to shock or charge and shock. So you know, you know, there are EMI fields that we come into contact with. As long as we're not in that field for very long, we're not going to have problems. Those things can't hurt, hurt your device. They can't um, damage the components. They can't scramble the programming. It can't reset your programming back to factory settings, anything like that. Okay. It can just confuse your device. And as long as we're not, you know, hugging a blender while it's running, we're going to be fine. Gonna be okay. fine. I, I, I joke about the don't hug that rule. Yeah. Uh, if you have anything, can I use a, can I use a, a skill saw? Can I use a chainsaw? Don't yeah. hug it. Yeah. Don't hug it and, and you'll be fine. And use the precautions that the medical device companies give you, either six inches or 12 inches or sometimes 24 inches, like with an induction oven or, uh, you know, a really uh, high amp bench grinder. It's two feet. But otherwise, yeah, you'll be, you'll be fine. You can use normal items with a normal distance. If you're using your sock, your chainsaw correctly, you're yes. going to be fine.